Hi, and welcome to another fantastic training session with Learning to Lean. Let's get started. Today we will be covering Chapter 6 from the Certified Six Sigma Yellow Belt Handbook, Project Identification. In today's session, you will learn voice of the customer, project selection, stakeholder analysis, and process inputs and outputs. Let's get started. Our first topic in this lesson is voice of the customer, or VOC. In order to be successful in a process change, product launch, or service, we need to understand exactly what our customers want and need. Remember, what they want and need today doesn't mean that it will be the same in three or six months, especially if a pandemic hits. Who are your customers? It's easy to think of customers as someone that buys your product or service. But have you thought about your internal customers? If you're in HR, pretty much everyone in the company is your customer. What about the person that you create a report for each month? She or he is your customer too. When we think about customers, we need to think about people and companies internally and externally. Now that we know who your customers are, how do you know what they want or value? Maybe now it's having a conversation over Zoom calls or gathering feedback from your social media page or warranty claims. Maybe you send out a survey to see whether or not they would recommend you to someone else. Regardless of how you gather it, it's important that you actually do this so you can tailor your product or service to their wants and needs not yours. Now that you have gathered the information from your customers, what are you going to do with it? How will this information help you to be successful? How do you translate their wants and needs to something that you can actually work with and that is measurable and actionable? You need to translate those wants and needs to quantifiable, meaning numbers that you can do math with, critical to quality characteristics. This involves taking the customer inputs and creating a product or service, making sure that you can actually create it and deliver it based on the information that you gathered. One of the tools that you can use to ensure the customer needs are designed into a product or service is called Quality Function Deployment, or QFD. You will also hear it called the House of Quality. In the House of Quality, you start with the customer requirements, followed by the technical requirements, then the relationship matrix. Next, you do a comparison with the competition you take action notes, revisit the competition, establish target values, and co-relationships. Now that we understand what our customer wants and values, inevitably, you will then generate a list of projects to work on to improve your product or service. But which one do you work on first? Let's talk about project selection. A series of successful Six Sigma projects will most definitely lead to more project ideas than you can work on. There should be a project proposal format that will allow the project selection group to follow a process to determine the order of the projects to be worked on. The project selection group is comprised of a master black belt, black belts, organizational champions, and key executive sponsors. This group establishes a set of criteria for project selection and team assignments. Typical project selection criteria are strategic importance, bottom line improvement, technical complexity, stakeholder risk and change management. An organization is unlikely to invest in a project that does not align with the overall organizational strategy. A good start for an organization for their goals is to use an A3 planning sheet as shown on the screen. 
planning for any organization is a starting point for a successful year and for the strategic goals and objectives. As previously noted, the Six Sigma projects that are selected should be in line with these goals and objectives. Alternatively, some companies use Hoshin planning or an X matrix for this activity. Two additional tools that you can use to help you in your project selection is a risk analysis table and a SWOT analysis, which stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Now let's look at stakeholder analysis. Stakeholders are those who have a vested interest in the process and or its products and outputs. End users are those who eventually consume the product or service. Subject matter experts or SMEs are those who have demonstrated skill and competency in an area that is important to the existence and sustainability of the business. And finally, process owners are those who have responsibility for the definition, execution, maintenance, and improvement of a specific process. Here are a few reasons to have process owners and stakeholders in your project. Stakeholders have the best knowledge base about the process. Stakeholders tend to have the best ideas for process improvement. Stakeholders are often the most aware of unintended consequences of process changes. And stakeholders buy-in is usually necessary to implement real process improvement. Stakeholders in a process are process operators and managers from all shifts, process customers, internal and external, process suppliers, internal and external, process design personnel, maintenance personnel, and others impacted in some way by process changes. The way I like to remember stakeholders is that it is anyone positively or negatively impacted by your project. Now let's talk about a process. What exactly is a process? Is making snow a process? Well, yes it is. A process simply transforms inputs into outputs. Input examples include man or people, method, machine, materials, management, measurement system, and mother nature. Outputs include products such as hardware, software, systems, data and information, and services. One tool that helps us to illustrate a process at a high level is a SIPOC, which stands for suppliers, inputs, processes, outputs, and customers. In order to create a SIPOC and be successful in your project, you need to understand the scope of the process that you're looking to improve. Where does your process begin and where does it end? Remember, we're not trying to boil the ocean here. A good rule of thumb is that if you can't describe your process at a high level in five to seven steps, then you may have scoped the process too large. A SIPAC helps us to describe our process at a high level, identifying the outputs, customers, inputs, and suppliers. Unlike how we read, we start with the process, then move to outputs, customers, inputs, and suppliers. More information on how to create a SIPOC can be found on our Learning to Lean YouTube channel and in future Yellow Belt training. In today's session, you learned voice of the customer, project selection, stakeholder analysis, and process inputs and outputs. Thanks for joining me in today's session. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you're the first to know about videos as they are released. You can also find us online at www.learningtolean.training. Thanks and have a great day.